really zoom it. And I'm, and I'm just going to go back to the middle of all And this is evolution of the Disney princess, but she's metal, yes. Which is very intriguing, but also makes me cringe a bit internally. Because, as you may know, I am not the biggest fan of princessy stuff in metal. However, rather than taking the elitist approach and being threatened by princesses invading the metal space, I can hack that thought and think, think of it as metal invading the princess space. I mean, that is what it is, because it's metal that's taking action here. Yes. I also successfully just made that about myself, and not the best parts of me. So this is Stardust. And that, yes. Yes. Uh, Stardust is the best, yes. And it... I have for long considered it one of the princessiest bands in the world, along with Illumi Shade and Delay, and I think that trio is just about to get slammed by Scardust being the most princessy band out there, because Delay never did Disney, and Illumi Shade did it once, and they did one song. Whereas, since this says evolution, I'm expecting it might not just be one song, uh, I, but I, something a bit more interesting. Yeah, I feel like I feel like our knowledge of Disney princesses will be thoroughly tested. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's going to be a total embarrassment. So I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Are you ready? No. What do you do when things go wrong? Oh, you sing a song.
I must shamefully admit the only parts of that that I could actually recognize were, were the Frozen songs. I feel like you're not ready to talk. <laughs> Can I talk then? Okay, so um, apparently, yes, our uh, knowledge of Metal Princesses will be thoroughly tested because when it comes to the songs themselves, like I said, most of them I didn't know, which is actually a good thing because this for me actually sounds like a new Skarda song, which also kind of tells you that their songs are like 18 in 1 as a style of composition. Well, okay, so given that it was a medley, yes, which I kind of saw coming, mm -hmm. We do know both their overtures, yes. So we know they can do that, and we know they can pull it off unbelievably well. Yes, they're they're spectacular at many. Yes. Uh, now, when it comes to recognizing songs, I also recognize Colors of the Wind by Pocahontas, mm -hmm. and uh, actually the very first intro theme from Snow White. That was such a flashback into my deep-rooted subconscious that I forgot was even there. That's from a cartoon we used to watch before we were seven. Yes, I remember. We were we were terrified of the big bad witch. Yes, yes, we would hide under the bed when those scenes would come. Yes, we, we just said that to the internet. Bit into the windmill history. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I forgot that song even existed. Yes. So, I feel like there was a little PTSD in there. More like curing PTSD. Huh. Cause I, it, it was, it was one of the first times in my life that I was witnessing it and being genuinely happy and not scared of a bad person showing up. Okay, can I say, you know that meme about like, when, um, uh, princess in a Disney movie starts singing and all the animals in the forest just start gathering and around and dancing? That's the band. That's how this felt. Okay. So. This might sound slightly controversial, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Okay. Feel free to fire the entire Disney songwriting cast. <laughs> right now. This, this house out Disney'd, Disney'd it themselves a thousand times over. Mm -hmm. I think it was one shot too, the yeah. whole film. Like, uh, man, I do not want to think how much planning goes into shooting this video. Yes. Band members going to the sides, choir coming to the front, choir moving to the back, Noah coming to the front, band members joining, band members dispersing, camera having to move in all those directions. It's like, I, I, at some point I was genuinely looking on the floor to see if there were tracks drawn for where people should be going. Just so that they don't stumble into each yeah, other. Yeah, with like numbers to map the timelines, but there was nothing there, which means you all memorized it, which is like, you already had to memorize what you were playing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's also something I never thought I would say in my life is that I heard blast beats on Let It Go. <laughs> yes, yes. And that actually might be our first time hearing the great Johan Weinberg doing proper blast beats. Not that I would have assumed he can't, but I guess there was just no room to properly integrate them in Scardust anywhere. Yes. Like, he could do the drum solo from Gone, which is like a machine gun, but it's not the blast beat technique, and this, I think, was pretty much it. Yes. Wow. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if I have anything else to say. Uh, I'm pretty sure there is more to say, but it's just too much of a shock on first. This, this is actually something I don't like about first time reactions. You don't get to say everything that the song is worthy of, but you get to say what first hit you, and I guess, I guess we're gonna have to be not good enough <laughs> like that. Um, so. I'm absolutely floored. This is absolutely another Stardust masterpiece. It's just, it's, it sounded like one song. Yes. It was like 15, but yeah. it sounded like one. Yeah, like, look, it's almost like, I know it's not their songs, but it feels like composition because there's two parts to composing. One is getting your musical ideas. The second is fitting them together. When it comes to fitting them together, they had to do the whole work. And like, the YouTube subtitles are telling you when a new song comes in, and I'm like, I don't hear it. I don't hear a transition there. It's that seamless. Yeah, yeah. And well, at the end, I think they even had... I, I also feel like I also feel like the vocals uh, smoothen out a lot of those transitions. Yeah, I mean, I mean, when, when it switched to Let It Go, yeah. it was like the lyric from the previous song said Let It Go, and then it slapped into this one. Yeah. So like, that was a great way to merge it. Mm -hmm. And I think... 
I, I don't know all the other songs well enough to figure out exactly what tricks they did to link them, but I would assume Disney songwriting has a bit of a formula, which would probably mean that compositionally they're not so difficult to fit together. Mm -hmm. uh, and another thing I think they were doing towards the end is after we got into the unknown, we had uh, like one, if not even two more titles show up afterwards, but you had into the unknown play all the way till the end. So I think what they did is layered themes of other songs. And I think where they did that is in the choir. They stack princesses on top of each other. Yes, that sounds, that sounds unbelievably inappropriate, but it is what they did, yes. <laughs> I wasn't thinking of it that way. I'm a programmer. I use stacks. I think we're done here. Yes, we probably. So if you enjoyed this reaction, we really appreciate the likes and shares. Initialize nice more, don't forget to subscribe. We bells upon it. Thank you very much for stopping by. We hope you enjoyed your stay, and we talk to see you back in the very soon.